Hi there, so there are two aspects of the rowing machine which loads of people ask questions about and actually are quite under explained. Now one of them is drag factor, which to be honest I'm going to under explain today by not mentioning at all. But the other one is the foot straps and primarily why you shouldn't use them to pull yourself forwards to the front of the machine. Now it comes down to technique and to, don't turn off, don't turn off. When folks like me talk about technique it's not just because we like the sound of our own voice but there's reason behind it, okay? It's not just we're trying to bore you and get everyone to row as they were on the boat. Um, it's down to, well for me anyway, it's down to three things. It's down to efficiency, it's down to speed, and it's down to the chances of getting injured, how technique can prevent injury, okay? So really when it comes to efficiency, what you want to do is you want to be using your energy to make the machine go fast. That's really what it's about, okay? You don't want to be wasting energy, okay? So anytime you are using muscles that you don't need to be using, you are wasting energy and your efficiency is low. Speed is about being able to get up and down the machine as quickly as possible and to be able to put in that full power uh, and make sure that you are putting everything into the flywheel, okay? You're not wasting any of that. It's all going into it. So efficiency and speed kind of go hand in hand. And then injury uh, prevention obviously talks for itself is that you want to row in a way that isn't going to cause you injury, all right? So that's the three headline reasons why I talk technique. And that, to be honest, has a lot to do with the foot straps. So here is something that is commonly seen. I'm not saying everybody, but if you go into a, a gym and you see people who haven't really been shown kind of the right way to row, what you'll often see is that they'll row and then their knees will come up as they tug on the foot straps to bring themselves forwards again, okay? Now, of course, there's a really good chance that if you are using the foot straps to pull yourself forwards, you're still nowhere near as extreme as this tangerine is showing you right now. However, what I want to get across today is that if you are pulling yourself forwards by yanking on those foot straps, the impact on your technique, on your speed, your efficiency, and your chances of getting injured is huge. So, tugging on the foot straps, that kind of forwards thing here as you pull yourself forwards, that is a really inefficient way to row, okay? Why? Well, for a start, you're using your shin muscles, the front shin muscles there, to pull yourself forwards, which you don't need to. So you're using muscles that you don't need to use in order to get yourself forwards again, okay? The other thing is that as you pop your knees up, your posture collapses and you start and you roll backwards, okay? So you pop up and you're like this. And so if you are trying to follow the best practice of a rowing stroke, which means a forward tilt, straight arms as you come into the catch, what's gonna happen is you come into the back, you tug, and then somehow you have to get yourself forwards again. So you're rowing, and then this action coming forwards again is actually exceptionally tiring. <laughs> <laughs> really on your, that kind of hiccup forwards is quite a lot. I mean, some might say it's a good core workout, but it's not your best to brace at the back in a nice posture, come forward, you get just the same kind of core workout, but it's um, in a much more efficient way, okay? So this rounding over and forwards is terribly inefficient. Plus you're using the muscles in the front of your shins, which is terribly inefficient, okay? Now the same goes in that exact same motion from a speed point of view. So if you are popping the knees up because you're pulling on the foot straps and you're trying to get the stroke rate up, it's really hard. So here we go, right, hang on. I'm gonna try and do a test for you. I'm gonna roll just a quick short burst at what would be my normal technique. I'm not saying I've got the best technique in the world, but I don't pull on the foot straps and get my knees to pop up. So let's see how fast I can get a stroke rate rise. There you go, 47 strokes a minute. Now this is where, I'd, <laughs> where, where the video's gonna go boop because I'm about to destroy my back doing this. But on this version, I'm gonna pull myself forwards with the foot straps. <sighs> 37, so that's 10 strokes a minute less because I literally can't get myself forwards fast enough. So take some challenges like this is May 2022 and this month's uh, concept to cross team challenge uh, is 10 hundred meter sprints. Now the difference between, from a stroke rate point of view, if you're going full guns between 37 and 47 strokes a minute is huge, okay? So 
you're not going to get the speed going up and down the rail from that point of view in order to really put that power into the machine. And you're also <laughs> losing or using up lots of energy from an efficiency point of view, okay? Because, uh, like I said, you're using muscles that you don't need to as you're all over the place like a, like a roller coaster. And then finally is the injury thing. So if you're coming into the back and then you tug yourself forwards, this collapsing of the posture as you get to the back is really, really bad for your lumbar, for your psoas muscle, for everything as you're kind of tilting backwards. Plus the rolling point, okay, so as you come into the back, knees pop up and then you try and get forwards again. What happens is that your sit bones are, if you imagine this is your glutes, your sit bones are just going grind backwards and forwards as you do this. It's like a rolling pin over the, the, I'm not saying you've got a doughy backside, don't worry, but it's like a rolling pin over your muscles. Whereas if you have a good posture, you come into the back, and you pivot forwards again, so you just pivot backwards and forwards, all that's happening is that your sit bones are just kind of going over one single point on your backside. Eventually, yes, after 10 minutes, you might get a little bit of discomfort, at which point you just kind of have a little bit of a wriggle, release the pressure on your backside. But it's not like this real grinding, which is where butt pain comes from, okay? If you even do this for one minute, you're gonna be in agony by the end of it. And imagine trying to do that for a half hour row, Okay, just because of this grinding of it, whereas just a nice tilt backwards and forwards, much better. So, this is your lower back, there's your backside, but also just that tugging point again for those front shin muscles, which are just going to be so worn out by the time you've done a row, okay? By the time you've done, say, a half hour row and you're pulling yourself forwards each time, oh man, they're going to be in such pain. So you could end up with a, a strained, you could end up with shin splints from rowing, which is just unheard of, okay? Shin splints are when you're bounding down the streets, running way too fast. Got terrible shin splints after years of playing squash. Um, yeah, so that covers injury, covers efficiency, and it covers speed, okay? And there's other kind of little, tiny little tweaks that happens that if you're in this, you're suddenly, you're under compressing as you come to the front, you find that because you're tugged, if you're, if you're not the type of person that tries to go into that forwards lean again, then what happens? So I'm saying that at best, the people will be coming forwards and then trying to get into this position. But for the people that don't even bother, this is what happens. They tug like this, they're constantly leaning backwards. You can see that there's this over compression happening of my knees as I come here. Oops. All the force is going into my lower back as I take the drive here. I'm not using my back at all. I'm hardly using my legs. Okay, and this is all because I'm tugging on the foot straps. So what to do? First thing, when you're rowing, have a look at what happens. If you spot you are having to lift the handle over your knees, okay? That's the indicator that you are tugging on the foot straps because what happens is your knees pop up and you're like, oh, <laughs> and you have to throw it over. So that's how you can identify it. Obviously you can look in a mirror, you can video yourself as well, but if you find that you're throwing the handle over your knees, then that's a good sign. If you find you're smacking the, the what's a good sign, I meant bad sign, uh, the, the smacking the seat off your heels, chances are it's because you're tugging on your foot straps because you're collapsing your posture and therefore the seat is whacking off your heels, okay? So how do you fix this? Okay, it's not very good saying don't tug on the foot straps, but how do you fix it? You fix it by taking your feet out of the foot straps, okay? And that completely, um, stops any chances of you being able to tug on the foot straps. However, what it also causes is the chances for you to end up falling right off the back of the machine because if you don't really think about it, you could just go flying off the back because you're not thinking about anything to uh, stop you fall off the back. So the important thing to think about here when it comes to straps rowing, well, it's two things. One is rather than taking your feet all the way out, just loosen them right off, okay? So just thumb out, flick your toe up, that makes it nice and loose, but also means that if you do fall off the back, you can quickly flick up your toes, okay? But the other thing is when you're taking your stroke, think about pointing your toes to the front of the machine. And that should keep you on the machine without you having to think about anything else. Anything else. You don't have to think about, oh, I'll make sure and get my legs down, make sure and do whatever. Just think about pointing your toes to the front of the machine. So if you take the drive, point my toes. Drive, point my toes. It's really hard to get that wrong if you're pointing your toes. Okay, so drive, point. And it means that you get your legs 
all the way down. You use all that power from your legs into the drive and you're not still driving as you get to the back. And it's that momentum that sends you off the back of the machine into the treadmill behind you and it's all a palaver and gym people are making you fill out accident forms and things, okay? So you just drive, point your toes, okay? There's other things, of course, that it then helps your posture. So if you have a nice, powerful posture as you finish, then what happens is you drive, your back goes in, you pull in, and it's just your core that soaks up the last few little um, pounds of momentum. How do you measure momentum? Um, as you come into the, the back of the stroke, okay? So you go, keep a nice posture, point your toes to the front of the machine, and you should be putting all of the power into the machine. And what happens, right, is that you've got to the back, you point your toes, you've got a good posture, then all you have to do is put the handle away from you, and that momentum triggers your back to start leaning forwards, and then once you've got the combination of your arms forwards and that uh, your back then leaning forwards, that continuing momentum means that all you have to do is bend your knees, especially on a Concept 2 with a slightly downward rake. All you have to do from this position is bend your knees, and you slide to the front of the machine, even without any momentum, bend my knees, slide to the front of the machine. I'm not pulling on anything, I just roll to the front. So if you just drive, hands away, body rock, knees. Hands, body, knees, okay? And this way, I am out of the straps, I promise you this is not a, an optical illusion. I am driving to the back of the stroke without falling off the back of the machine. Hands away, rock forwards, knees bend. And I'm recovering to the front of the machine without needing to pull on the foot straps. So, if you've been under the impression that you have to, that there's no other way, for you to row than to pull yourself forwards on the foot straps. Trust me, you don't have to. It's just down to uh, making sure you point your toes towards the front of the machine at the back of the stroke to make sure that all of your leg drive has gone into the machine rather than sending you off the back again. Uh, and making sure to use that momentum of the hands away and the forward lean. And then that will at least address the issue with the foot straps. You may have other issues, in which case, please do get in touch and I'll try and help with them as well. Because obviously, I'm just here to help. I do all this for free. All my roll along workouts that I have up here are entirely free. You never get to a point where I just go, yeah, right, you, you have to pay me now. <laughs> you have to give me $10 or you shall see no more of me. Nope, absolutely free. Everything is entirely free. I mean, really, would I charge for this? I mean, it's enough, you're, you're paying me enough that you'll listen to me, so. <laughs> so, there we go. That's my little video about foot straps and why you shouldn't uh, pull yourself forwards and how to work on a little drill to stop yourself so you can learn how to not pull yourself forwards when it comes to uh, uh, rowing. Obviously, when you get up to the higher rates, there is uh, an element, like if you go, if you wind back to me doing my fast row, you'll see that my feet were bracing against the, the foot straps because other because there is like an momentum issue at 47 strokes per minute. But 20 strokes a minute, or for me, up to around about 24, I don't need to use the foot straps, okay? So uh, hopefully uh, this video has shown you that you don't need to either. Please leave me some kind of a comment. Uh, let me know whether you enjoyed this or not. I've been speaking at a million miles an hour to try and get to the end of this one. And I guarantee it's still probably around about 15 minutes long. So I'm very sorry about that. But I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please look after yourselves. I will see you in a future video. Until then, please stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye.